Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Digits Club. Today we are looking at a bunch of articles that are very much worth mentioning. So as always, stay tuned for those. All right, so we're starting with the Celsius story once again. It is starting to become a bit of a trend here on the Digits Club. Celsius has obviously been in the news coverage for three times in a row now, I believe. Obviously, they froze all of their assets as the uh, you know legal team uh, got into some major trouble. Right now, we are seeing them paying off over 20 million uh, in Avdebs. We can see that over here in a tweet. Where's the tweet? I can't find the tweet. <laughs> there was a tweet, I swear to God, there was a tweet here, but there's no more tweet. I think they re removed it, but there was a screenshot of this transaction actually being made. So it is 100% confirmed, uh, showing that the firm is still trying to pay off its debt, at least it's trying to. So yeah, whether that is good news or not, I mean, honestly, that is up to you. Celsius is still in a lot of trouble, regardless if it pays off all of its debt or not. And obviously this 20 million is just a small piece of the pie. It will need to, to pay off much, much more. But uh, we're reading in this article that its legal team is still trying to keep the company afloat. So it, it does look like the firm is more so trying to keep the company alive, rather than this just to save their own skin, which is a good sign if you have your money in Celsius. I mean, at least it shows that they're trying, I suppose. So uh, that's more than can be said from many, many other firms that have the same faith. So the article goes much more in depth, but to be honest, it's just more of the same. We already went over this. So if you want more information, check out one of my previous videos. For yeah, for now, they're paying off their debt and this story is ever moving, ever changing. So probably we'll be talking again about it tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Then an article from the Discord community. So make sure to join that one if you haven't already, because we get a lot of very cool uh, insights over there, uh, such as this one. Will the release of 3 billion Bitcoin from Metgox cause the market bottom in August? So this is a bit of an interesting story, a bit of a different one than normal. Uh, it says that maybe 137,000 Bitcoin worth roughly 2.8 billion might soon be released into the market as funds lost to Metgox hack of 2011. Uh, the loss that was at to that occurred in 2011 was 850,000 Bitcoin, which is a massive, massive amount. It was apparently hacked all the way back in 2011 when a Bitcoin was worth nothing, really. It is currently worth 17.8 billion in today's price. Uh, in 2014, McGox reported it had found 200,000 Bitcoin, but those coins have been locked in litigation until now. So they are no longer locked in litigation, so they might actually join the market, which could obviously have a very big effect on the Bitcoin price. In November 2021, McGox released a formal rehabil rehabilitation plan to return lost funds to investors who lost assets to their crypto some seven years ago. Then on July 6, 2022, McGox and rehabilitation trustee, <laughs> that's a difficult name, Nabahuki, <laughs> sent an email to creditors, giving them the option to receive USD, BTS, BTC, or B BCH. The news brings us closer than ever to the funds finally being released to the creditors. This one might have been easy to miss uh, as there's so much stuff going on. Uh, it's sometimes easy to miss the somewhat smaller stories. So I uh, try to include a combination where you have the big news that you don't want to miss, but also the news that you might have missed otherwise. Moving on to Terra, yet another firm that has been in my reviews a lot lately, as it has just completely collapsed, obviously. So Terra has fully collapsed, but now the projects that have run or depended on Terra are banding together to move to the Polygon ecosystem. Now, why did they choose for Polygon? Uh, I suppose there's multiple reasons. None of them are really explored here in this article, probably because we don't really know yet, but they're uh, transferring to the Polygon Layer 2 network. Uh, more than 48 different crypto projects formerly based on the field Terra ecosystem have found a resurge by migrating over to Polygon. 
Polygon Studio CEO Ryan Wand expressed a delight at this network's ability to onboard many projects to the ecosystem. Ryan Watt here with a tweet saying that he's very happy about it. Obviously, he's very happy about it. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a no-brainer, right? The Polygon Matic is a network that, that serves as a layer two scaling solution for the Ethereum network. So like I said, they don't go very in depth as to why all of these projects individually has have chosen for this uh, network per se. Uh, it is what it is. Nearly 50 projects are migrating over to the Polygon network, which obviously if this transition goes very well, could mean a lot for the Polygon network. Uh, it could really give it a big boost. So yeah, from the ashes of Terra, uh, a new giant might just arise. So very interesting article here as well. And we'll for sure keep an eye on this story and see how it progresses. Then in other news, the US dominates crypto ATMs installations and Bitcoin hash rates worldwide. So with China out of the way, essentially the US has been absolutely dominating as they contribute 37.8% of the mining power uh, by January 2022. So that is absolutely the vast majority what much more than any other country if you would like a visualization then you can see that over here over here in uh, the middle of 2021 Canada actually became quite large as well but they uh, you know like down a little bit and as China uh, continued to uh, dwindle the US took over as the largest contributor in uh, Bitcoin mined so that is I believe a first or at least a first in a very long while that the US takes uh, takes the throne. So that is cool. That's good to see. I mean, uh, look at this, uh, the, the fall of China. They really moved on from Bitcoin. We see here the crypto ATM distribution by continents and countries. And yeah, that's just the United States uh, obviously dominating here as well with 87% and North America at 95%, which is really cool to see actually. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, that they were the front runners in that by such a big amount. And then another quick fun article from the Discord. Always like to include at least some of them because, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the giving a little bit of back to the community, right? So can Chief Vibes Officer and NFT influencers keep things positive amid the crypto collapse? So as you guys are probably well aware, with the bear market came a big dump in the price of, of basically all NFTs. Um, non-fungible tokens that is um, here's a great example a 2.9 million nft of jack dorsey's first tweet being forced to sell for just six thousand eight hundred dollars although originally bought for 2.9 million so this is just one of the many stories of nfts becoming essentially worthless and the market going down as a whole so it's very unfortunate, of course, but they're now actively trying to keep the vibes positive, which is a pretty good initiative. So it was really fun to see. So thanks for sending it over in the Discord. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. There's not much more to this one. All right, moving over to the market. We lost the one trillion market cap as we are now at 951 billion again. Uh, we can see that back in the prices as the Bitcoin has come down from its temporarily height of $21,000. Uh, we are now slightly above 20K. Um, in the last 24 hours, um, the, both Bitcoin and Ethereum lost over 4% of its value. Uh, Ethereum at uh, slightly over 1.1K. Uh, we can see the same trend in many of the other coins, obviously, because they always follow suit. The only ones that are really standing out here are Monero and internet computer and that's about it you know the rest is all in red and uh even though these guys must, uh, are, are surviving right now for some reason uh, they're sure to fall soon so yeah that that's basically the end of the big green sea that we've been having for a while i mean it had to end somewhere there were some people that somehow thought that this was going to be the end of the bear market i don't know why i do not know why they thought that uh, that's just not realistic and clearly it's not what happened we had a you know a brief pump and you know the it's short-lived as we probably uh, most of us already expected here at the fear and greed index however we do still see some progress although we did come from 24 which was an incredibly good number we're now back at 22 which is still much better than where we originally came from which of course was you know nines and tens and eleventh so yeah, that, that is still, in my opinion, a uh, an improvement and a pretty good result. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was the Daily Market Overview. Not much more to say today. Quite some interesting articles and, of course, a red market, unfortunately. Tomorrow, we're going to be back with another Launchpad review and a market overview. So if you enjoy those, 
make sure to leave a like and i'll see you guys in the next one ciao ciao